As promised, I know it took quite a while, but we finally got the Florida Maquis official hats into the Teespring store. They are up, available, and live now. There are three different kinds. They are 17, 18, and 19, respectively. So for those of you wishing to support the Florida Maquis, but aren't really too excited about doing it with masks, we now have many other options. These three, plus bags, stickers, prints, tapestries, pillows, phone cases, stickers, mugs, you name it. We have it. Fanny packs, even, if you're into that. So, anyway, thank you for your patience. I very much appreciate it. Also, everyone over at Twitch, we had a epic night last night. Went for four solid hours. Normally only go for three, but it was a weekend night, and everybody wanted to stay up, and the numbers were staying fairly high. So, we continue to go through and um, play the game, even after you've beaten the main story of the game. There's a great deal that you can do. All sorts of online challenges and different expansions that we're working through. It's a lot of fun. Middle Earth Shadow of War is the name of the game that we're playing. At some point, we're probably going to start exploring God of War. We may go back to uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag or maybe another one of their um, different iterations. But would love to see you here. It's a great platform. The reason I bring it up here on YouTube is because over there we can have an open and frank and live conversation. This is me in the upper right here. There's a little window and I'm sitting here playing the game and you can ask me anything you want. We can talk about anything we want. There's no filters. There's no screeners. There's nothing like that. I mean, we do have some basic standards um, of decency and I have assign different moderators to keep trolls from taking over, but we don't normally have too big of a problem. Last night we played for four hours and didn't have a single troll, so, and talked about a great many things, and as you can see, the game itself just has epic scenery and is uh, really beautiful just to watch the backdrop, even without the sound, so, but without any further delay... Over the last week, I have been talking about the situation in Antarctica and what may have occurred down there historically and what might be the great interest of all of the nations of the world that have laid claim to different areas down there. We've shown so many things that it would be very hard to put them all into one video. I've tried to, just going from location to location, but that really doesn't give you a sense of what the importance is. After World War II and during, for some reason, the Germans took a great interest in the region. I've alleged in recent videos that it has something to do with this man named King Baudouin, that he may have been the last Templar Knight. He passed back in 93, but he was the only royal whose funeral the Queen ever attended. And they share the Order of Solomon. He carried so many honors it was difficult to name, but a great many of them had to do with um, the Order of the Supreme Order of Christ, the Order of the Holy Sepulcher, things that you would associate with Hospitaller and Templar Knights. What the Germans may have been looking for was something far beyond what anyone thought might exist. Some have thought it was the Holy Grail. Some have thought it was the Ark of the Covenant. Maybe they had made contact with other beings down there. That very well might have been. I have an idea about who these beings are and what they represent. And it's probably nothing you've ever heard before. This was an image I used recently of something we found in Antarctica. One of these flying disks crashed into the ice. And there's quite a few others, but this is probably the best image. It has to do with this, and I'm sure a lot of people are already like, oh no, he's going to go show pictures of pretty girls again. I'm like, yeah, well, I might, but it has to do with this V. It's the Roman numeral five, and that symbol has been used historically for a great many things. Um, holding up two fingers, for example, in England that way doesn't mean peace. It's a form of an insult. 
the English adopted that after uh, the French would chop off the first two fingers of English um, longbow operators to keep them from ever being longbow operators again. So they would hold up those two fingers as a taunt to the French. So it's had a great many meanings throughout history, but yeah, she's a pretty girl. She absolutely is. But there's more to it than this. There really is more to it. Um, she's played some very interesting roles, Marina Backer, and she's Brazilian. And one of those was that of someone named Adria in the Stargate series. Now, many know we've found a Stargate down in Antarctica. The correlations just seem to keep piling up. But one of the stories in the Bible talks about a serpent, a beast, that can speak. Not only can it speak, it can reason, and it can converse. And not only can it speak and reason and converse, it has some desire to beguile Eve. Now, have any of you encountered an animal in your daily um, travels that can speak and converse with you? Some beast. Has science ever discovered one? No. There's only one that can. And it really doesn't think on its own. It doesn't converse on its own. It's a mimic. And that's a parrot. Now, the strange part about the parrot is that it's referred to, historically, as Siticorum. And where do we find the term Siticorum? Siticorum regio appears in Antarctica. Right here, many have said, oh, they only mean par uh, penguins. Sorry, there'd be no way you would use the same word for a parrot as you would for a penguin. I know ancient sailors weren't all that bright, but... Two very, very different animals. Now, what does this all have to do with V? What does it have to do with the Germans? What does it have to do with any of that? Well, in Revelation 13, we talk about another beast. And this beast also has speech to speak great things and blasphemy. Now, once again, beast rising out of the sea, a beast that can speak. The only beast that has the ability to speak that we've encountered so far has been this bird, this parrot. And I just wanted to bring up something from Genesis that I thought was interesting that happened on the fifth day. Genesis 20. I'm sorry, Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 20. Pardon me. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. So that was day five, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now, day six, God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, creeping thing, beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so, made the beast of the earth and man in day six. So what happened on day five? The V day and day six are very, very different things. Now jump to Genesis 3, chapter 1. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals. Well, that's HCB. Let's do KJV. Pardon me. King James. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made and said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So not only did this 
beast, this serpent, most subtle of all, have the ability to think and reason and speak. It had the ability to conjure its own desires. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now everyone knows the rest of the story here, and then the condemnation that comes. The serpent beguiled me. Those were Eve's words. And yet we see this also, this blasphemy being spoken of in the 13th chapter of Revelation. Stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten hordes, and upon his horns ten crowns, the name of blasphemy. This beast could speak too. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, just like in Genesis. See, the five is a very important number in the Bible. It has all sorts of meanings to it. Now, Antarctica. One of the things that I found a long time ago that never made any sense to me and I let it go was this region where it looks like somebody left a trail. It's very near the sea, right here. And there are all sorts of very strange formations and things that don't make sense, but what occurs over and over again is this symbol V. Everywhere you go. Here's one. There's one very small right here in a very familiar shape if uh, those of you have been paying attention to other videos. Here's another one. Let's see if I can get the light to show up here. This is the tricky part about some areas of Antarctica. When you're showing it, you have to change the exposure to see it. right here. This symbol shows up over and over and over again. But the most important one is here because it's this VI formation, I've called it. It's VI, and it appears in two different layers. Let's see if I can get this to show. It was the uh, 2011, right here, very clearly, this is the 12-10-2011 layer. And then only a matter of not even two months later, somebody redid the imagery here. Somebody sent the satellite, the Maxar satellite, back to re-image the region, not even two months later. And through this entire region, we see V after V. This is the uh, what I had labeled the QPV it's upside down. Let me uh, flip this around here. Formation. It looks like it's almost like a square with a line here, a P, and then another V. I didn't know what any of this meant. I really didn't. I thought maybe it had something to do with the Roman Six Legion. But, but, when I saw it as a trail along this ridge, if someone would have come here to Antarctica, this would have been a place out of the wind. This would have been a place that they could have traveled long distances without having to deal with the problems associated with Antarctica. And I'll give you this location, and you can inspect this for yourself. There's uh, more formations like this all over, but here is the kicker. The Series V, everybody remembers, with Marina Backer, and it's the reason I brought it up, had to do with serpents beguiling man wearing human skin that can speak. Now, if they were going to leave a warning about serpents, you would think, well, gosh, where is that serpent? Where would they have found it? What does that look like to you? This is one of the six serpents I found down here. 
I'm wondering if there are more. I've done uh, some enhancing on different images that I've used for thumbnails, but this is the original image just to make it show up better because filming the screen the way that I do, it just doesn't come across right. This is right in the same region. What part of wind, ice, rock, and snow creates black diamonds like this? I know this is kind of off topic, but so many things in this region. You can follow it like a trail. Over and over again, we see this V imagery. It just makes me wonder, what would happen if you would cross a serpent and a bird? What would you get? A serpent that can fly. What would you call that? I think you might call it a dragon. A serpent and a bird. It just seems to make just too much sense that maybe somebody might have been trying to warn us about a beguiling serpent. Much like spoken of in Genesis and in Revelation, that there may be someone out there in Hollywood that understands what's going on. What would happen? And as if that wasn't crazy enough, Okay, that the only animal that we know of on the planet that has the ability to speak and mimic is a parrot. That we have a map down here that says Siticorum Regio, mean region of parrots. You ready for this? I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. Can someone please explain to me how this could be created just from wind, ice, rock, and snow in Antarctica. And I'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.